in a world for friends one mission to bring freedom to everyone involved dude what the fuck are you doing I'm doing a thing for the podcast dude, just say the name fine it's the freedom friends podcast <laughs> Holy fuck, boys. It is time. It is Welcome, time. everybody. It's time for the Freedom Friends Podcast Special Edition. We have a very, very special guest with us tonight. But before that, I'm Mikey. That's John. We got Big Jim over there on the end. And that's not John. That's Scott. <laughs> and that's John. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. And tonight, we have the one and only Mr. Rob Oberst. What's up, buddy? What's How up, are you? guys? Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Dude, thanks for coming, man. Thanks for coming. Uh, World Strongman, two-time finalist, 2013, 2018, I believe. Yeah, uh, you've been on my Wikipedia. I've been fucking. <laughs> hey man, I, I come into these things. I kind of do this for a living. That's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, and a current record holder of the log press. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't have the log record right now. No? Um, it was actually snagged from me a little bit ago. But You're as, soon, back. as soon as we get another max log, which looks like we will have one in Worlds, I'm taking my record back. Fucking nice. There you go. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Um, so uh, you're down here. Am I the only one that's going to talk today, guys? Or? No, we're, we're, we're following your lead, buddy. You know we're going to talk. You were doing great. We were just letting you go. Uh, you're down to, we, had a, we had a competition this last Saturday. Uh, we, we talked about it a little bit on the last show. Um, and uh, you were down here really uh, helping helping kind of host the thing, right? Yeah, Top Tier Strength in New Braunfels had a, an amateur show and asked me out. And I've, I've Jim's family, so I was here in a heartbeat. And uh, love it, man. It's... it's this feels like home to me, even though I, I'm living in Idaho right now. New Braunfels still feels like home. Sure. So, so speaking of that, where where do you hail from? Originally from Colorado or from uh, California? Uh, yeah. Well, kind of. My family was gypsies growing up, so we bounced around a lot. Uh, lived all over the place, but uh, was born and went to high school in California. Okay. So I kind of feel like I'm from California, even though like. Right. It doesn't quite match me. <laughs> most, people, most, people, most people think of California, they think of L.A. or yeah. San Francisco. But California is such a, a vast state. There's so many different uh, uh, cultures and, and difference of, um, you know, characters and people and stuff. So yeah. the more north you go, the more um, more like me it gets, I guess. Right, right. Yeah. right. Well, I mean, that, that would be like if somebody was like, you know, Texans are all like Austin. And all of us would be like, um, yeah, no, Texas is no. like four or five states. I mean, tell me El Paso is the same as Dallas, is the same as Austin, is the same as Houston. Right. Yeah. They're, all you know, like, they're very, very different. Yeah. You know? That's God bless. Best country in the world. Damn, right here. Best state of the union. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the Republic. Mm -hmm. Dude, I think we should succeed. Succeed. Just fucking do At it. At this point? <laughs> yeah. I mean, just fucking I, I mean, do it. Why not? Why yeah. not? At this point, I, I, I just, I don't. None of us really knows the legality of any of that shit. So like, no, we're just talking. Every year, but, though, yeah. No, no. As, as soon as they like lay down some requests for some sniper support, like I'll be like, okay, I'm kind of in now. Yeah, right. I, can, I understand this, yeah. right? But, uh, but yeah. uh, the uh, if you're paying attention, like online, it always feels like we're in the middle. Like for the last, at least for the last like several years, it feels like we're in the middle of secession or or civil war or a riot, yeah. whatever's going on. It seems so intense there. But, I mean. But when you get in the real world, everyone's just kind of like, hey, yeah, yeah we're, yeah. we're just living. We're then done. if you go back like a couple, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years in history, it, it has felt like that all yep. the time. It's just this is our, a different. I think know. it's uh, I'm going to hurt some feelings right now, but uh, I think it's hilarious. Like I, I'm a gun guy. Uh, like I have plenty of guns. My girl's been working in gun shops forever. But it, to me, it's so hilarious that every six months or year, everyone thinks our guns are going to get taken away. <laughs> it's like, how, how have you guys not caught up to the fact that that's just the way things go? Like, they're going to take our guns. Then we buy all the guns. They don't take any guns. Do you, six you, months later, you they're going to take the guns. Do you want to know why that really happens? Sales. Because most guys have to justify it to their wives. Mm, <laughs> so it's psych, like, like a guy wants to buy a gun every six months, right? Right, right. So there has to be something that he can feed the, the bullshit to the wife. Right, like, they're going to take them. Yeah. Gotta get it's my last gone. chance again. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've been saying that every three months for the last 20 years. That's why dudes in our demographic have like six divorces. It's like, it's like yep. shit. I got to get a new wife so I can get more guns. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. No, it, it, to point. me, it, it got old real quick. Like I got into guns 
And then, like, I, like within the first year, I was like, okay, like, I'm, I'm not going to listen to anyone saying they're taking our guns again. Even now, like, like it's probably as hectic as it's been in my lifetime as far as, like, clamoring for gun control and sure. the ridiculousness of people thinking that more gun laws will make Chicago safer. Right. But, yeah, because you know, <laughs> yeah, the criminals are going to turn all of them in. It's right. Fun. You yeah. know, even, even my friends in Chicago, I talk to them and... Uh, Everyone knows the more gun laws you get doesn't really change what's going on in that city. It's all illegal guns. Yeah, so yeah. like, well, know. it does change it, but not the way they. It want changes it, it for the legal yeah. people who are protecting themselves. Yeah. Right, right. No, right. It, it changes it because like you as a criminal now know that nobody else can legally carry. Right. So you can run around and be an asshole with no consequences. Yep. yep. That's why in Texas, like. I mean, you got to think twice about running around like an asshole. Same in Idaho. Idaho is a constitutional <laughs> yeah. carry state. Yeah. We just don't have those kind of problems. Right? Yeah. You know? there, there's a big push right now to make Texas constitutional carry. Uh, and I was watching a live feed about it this morning. And the police chief in Dallas got on there and started running his fucking suck. And he's worthless, like, dude. Forget he's that guy. fucking trash, man. And he's sitting there and he's like, he's like, you know, uh, it's just going to cause more problems. We have to change all this red tape and we have to go through and all these legality issues and all this. And it's like, bro. Fucking relax. I was like, and I even commented on it. I was like, can somebody tell mine Fuhrer over here how the fucking Second Amendment works? Yeah. I was like, Jesus Christ. I hope what they do. I've been dragging my feet on getting my CCW. So yeah. <laughs> you guys, just you guys have Castle Law though. Castle Law is like yeah. pretty, yeah. pretty uh, encompassing. You know, sure. You can always have it with uh, your truck or whatever. You yeah, have in from, your from your your place of residence, your place of business, and your vehicle in between. Yeah. And right. other than that, I'm drinking and you can't carry. So true. Yeah, they, fucking. Yeah. That's why I haven't gotten a concealed carry yet. That's a good point. Shit, it's a very good point. You know, when they do ultimately decide to f- and figure out how to like confiscate all the guns, <laughs> then we'll just figure out some really cool fucking like lasers or some shit. Sure, right? sure. And we'll be able to kill shit in each other with with non bullet firing. I don't think People that's the killing, ultimate like, like finality. I don't think we're gonna end up in a in a place where they like Canada where they go back and confiscate. You know, I think I, I think, it, I, think, think I think happen. Canadians I think are will. nice. Try we're not nice. No, yeah, right. <laughs> no. I mean, there's I too many people. I that, think they'll try. Slowly. Maybe yeah. maybe they'll try, but I don't think that'd go well right. quickly. And it'd, right. it'd just be like anything else, whether you know they'll they'll try it. They'll act like it's it's going to work great, and then a few weeks later they'll stop talking about it and pretend it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who do you know that's going to just go turn in everything? I mean, yeah. Out of us, we probably know a couple thousand guys who are just like, nah, yeah. shit ain't happening, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. I don't know. I, I, one of my favorite YouTube like like videos that I've seen over the last couple of years, with, like these gun buyback program, programs and everything. Is the kid who went to Home Depot and built like this little shitty like eight like, dollar yeah. pen gun and turned it in for two hundred bucks and went and bought an AR? Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, this kid fucking cracked the code, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, some like uh, yeah. nineteen year old kid did it. I was like, Fuck. that's awesome. Got to respect the jam, man. Got to respect it. Yeah. Oh shit. So what, what are you up to? What's uh what's upcoming for you? Um. So right now we are nine weeks out of World's Strongest Man and. Um, just training for that, making sure I'm prepped and ready. It's it's going great. I've uh, for the first time in my career, I've I've got like a, a sports physio and a massage person and and all that kind of stuff. I do I, all my my prehab and rehab and everything. I'm making sure it's all done well, and I I feel great. You know, I got to the point in my career a little while ago where I thought I was pretty much done. You know, I was just so torn up and. You know, legs are going numb every other day and I can't squeeze my hand, you know, can't pick up a pa- piece of paper. And so I, I got to a point where I was just done. And then um, I feel, I feel it makes you feel stupid. You know, it's like that whole time I didn't have to go through that if I was just taking care of myself properly. But I, I learned the hard way, like pretty much everything else. So <laughs> yeah. you know, right. I'm feeling great. I'm the strongest I've ever been, fastest I've ever been, healthiest I've ever been. That's so, awesome. Nice. You know, a few more years banging it out, and we'll see how it goes. Awesome. Yeah. 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 We're, 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 uh, we're Worlds this year. Worlds is June, and it's in Sacramento. Okay. So for me, that's just uh, like a five-hour drive. Oh, so perfect. that's awesome. Explain I don't have to, to get on why a plane. that's such a big deal, like uh, all-encompassing. Because when you know, even if it's in Flo- if it's in America, it's great. It's it's there's no complaints, right? But w- when we go to like the Philippines and stuff, oh my gosh, China, like, China. Fucking when we China. were in, when I was in China, there were thirty of us, and like twenty-four of us ended up getting parasites. Oh, jeez. Uh, I was messed up for like six to eight months with Fuck. bugs in my guts. But 
aside from that, like you've got to, you've got to, you know, find out like if they have anything that's similar to like Gatorade or, or anything that, that oh, you get yeah. your salts in, you got to find out like, is there a real masseuse or is this lady just going to flip you over and try and pull on your wiener? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, is it a Belichick masseuse? Or <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate on that that's man a, right that's now. That's a craft. Come on. craft Fuck no, dude. That's a, uh, that's a, that was a Robert Kraft, yeah. Robert Kraft move. So with, uh, with with it being so close, like I can bring all of my equipment. I don't have to worry about flights. I don't have to worry about losing stuff. I don't have to worry about like normally I pack two bags and they're so stuffed that they're like way over the weight limit. I'm paying all this extra fees and everything. And you wanna you wanna try and bring food and stuff so you can be prepared. I, I like to have like the microwavable bags of rice and, and my eggs and all that stuff so I can eat in my room without having to go do a bunch of stuff and get my, my right. timing right. All that, all that really, really helps when when we're in the states, and it's even way better now that I don't have to fly. I get to drive down. Yeah, you bring so your crew, awesome. yeah, you kinda, yeah. yeah. You the crew everything. and all that, man. That's it's it's a different world when it's like that. So you said Jim's like family. Mm-hmm. How do you know Jim? I met Jim. Um, how many years ago was that, Jim? Oh, five or six. But we've got but, two. We've got two connections. But. So so I yeah. I came out and. Uh, did his show the we had a we had a show here in New Braunfels and um, it was a great show at the Harley Davidson and had a great time won the show it was awesome and uh, but coming out I didn't realize that uh, Jim's actually married to the cousin of my high school best friend oh and and so um, I I came out here and, and Leon who is his wife's brother is basically like an identical twin to my best friend growing up whose name was Kyle. And I guess Leon like came down to where I was in high school and, and came to a party that I was at and everything. I don't remember. He's got all kinds all. of great stories and you don't remember a damn thing. <laughs> right. Well, that's what high school was you like You them, but yeah. You know, so... I mean, it's kind of easy when you just stare at your teachers until they apologize. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it was... Um, so basically... Uh, coming out here was like finding them finding my best friend again and now leon and julie are so so close and you know they're basically they are like family and jim as well like you know it's uh it's like but is like it's like you have to have jim now i have to have him. yeah we know the feeling yeah. <laughs> yeah. i get more. to be i get to be rob's asshole when <laughs> rob's like done with people that is also a very a big plus like I'm normally I'm super great with people. It's super easy going, but there's always a point in anybody's day when they're just like, all right, I, I gotta, I gotta I'm, be left yeah, alone a little I'm bit. Finished, yeah. Jim is the guy who will keep people away from me without hesitation. <laughs> so that's always that's always a benefit too. Ob yeah. ob oh, we had a, a woman chase us into the water. Oh, we yeah. were miles offshore, and she came swimming <laughs> with her frigging camera overhead like it was a rifle. Yeah. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I saw a lot of that uh, on Saturday, man. You got a lot of fan girls. I saw, I heard one girl in particular, like she grossed me the fuck out talking about you, and I was like, Jesus Christ, lady! Like yeah. I feel like I was just assaulted by listening to what you're talking about about poor Obi over here. Like it was yeah, it's fucking not rude, rowdy. It gets a little weird sometimes. Most people are pretty cool. That, that's not the weird stuff. That's kind of like I kind of get it. It's the dudes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I was standing there with my girl and this this other girl came up and she was like, she, she literally word for word. She goes, you make my boyfriend so wet. And me and my girl. What? Like, what? <laughs> like, that's, that's just such a my weird way to start off. You the need conversation. a different boyfriend. My boyfriend's own. butthole starts salivating every time he sees you. You <laughs> both should see other men. So, so, Obi, we have a lot of listeners, not a lot of watchers. Uh, how? How tall are you? How big are you? Like, give us the lay down. Um, six, seven and a half about, maybe about six, seven, three, fours for people who are all finicky. And uh, right about 400 pounds. I'm, I'm guessing today probably like 395. Yeah. So. He is a giant. You're yeah. a large man. Uh, like, in, high, in high school, your senior year, how big were you? I graduated high school 375 pounds. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. I was always big. Like, you look at a lot of the strong men. And you go back to their their old pictures and stuff, and they're all skin and bones. Like me, I'm not. I've yeah. always been like this, you yeah. know, always. And so that's that's a big difference too in how I eat. Like a lot of those guys are eating constantly, all freaking day. Like all the all the pastas and all the pizzas and all the carbs and all that. 
for me, I eat a couple regular meals, three regular meals a day, maybe four, you know, if they're right. small. And that's it. Like, if, if I ate like other strong men, I'd be 500 pounds. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So I, I actually yeah. have to, like, keep my diet straight to just be 400 pounds. Yeah. So. When uh, we talked about this in the last episode, uh, but when we were at Top Tier on this past Saturday, yeah. uh, I just got done saying hi to you for the you know first time. It was crazy busy. So, you know, we didn't get much time to talk. But uh, so we walked away. I think another event started and you were judging that event. And I walk over next to Mikey. And we were just kind of like talking, and we were like, "Man, I'm like, is that how everybody else feels around us? Yeah, because we're how not, we feel around cause, Obi. Cause <laughs> we're not little people, John right. and I. You know, like fuck. Yeah. And it's just like Jesus Christ. So it's like I, I'm kind of start, and he's not here, and I wish he was, man. Jazz, uh, who's our other host, uh, prop him on up the on show. the counter. Yeah, like, you can like, just like hold him on your shoulder. I'm he, assuming that's how guy. that's how Jazz feels. Like around, cause he always says it. He's like, that's why I hang out with big guys. Right. You know what I mean, he's like, I can because Jazz has got Jazz is. How do you explain jazz? Jazz is well. One, he's too fucking smart for his own good. Mm-hmm. Like he's he's brilliant. Like he, if his he dad, really if his father hadn't have been uh, like an active duty soldier, jazz would be working at NASA, mm-hmm. like like saving the world with Elon Musk or some shit, right? Mm-hmm. But as it turned out, because his dad was like you know a colonel and shit, jazz enlisted in the army and was like fuck it, I like tits and beer. You know? <laughs> it was like you know like just does what he does. So. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, Jazz, we miss you, buddy. Wish you could have made it. I uh, you know you had a prior they engagement. Do. They don't speak for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> he had some prior engagements he had to uh, handle. Uh, tra- and one thing we don't do on the show is we don't fuck with tradition. So no. we appreciate that, man. Any? Uh, did you play any sports in high school? Yeah, college. Yep. Um, played Shuffleboard. football. And played f- <laughs> played played football in high school. That's really the only reason why I went to high school. Uh, like I was saying. Uh, Jim's wife is cousins with a friend of mine, Kyle, and he's the reason I went to high school. I was gonna, I was just not gonna go to school. I, I, my family wasn't, you know, like too into it. They didn't really care either way, right? So I was just like, "Why well, go?" And uh, Kyle hit me up and was like, "Man, we need you on the football team. We need you." They wanted me originally to come play tight end because I was, I, I ran a four nine at three sixty five. Jesus <laughs> Christ! I, know, I, know what I'm I ran a four nine. Even if they and, caught you, they still couldn't tackle you. And <laughs> I got great. hands like I, my hands are like glue. I don't know what it is, but I can catch everything. Of course, as soon as I got there, I was the biggest dude on the field. And they were like, no, you're a lineman, you know. So. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I played, played football. And then uh, senior year. How many year scouts did, were just, like, lined up looking at you? Like, it was, yeah, I was salivating. I was man. very, very recruited. Um, where, I, where I was playing ball, um, it's kind of a surf town, Santa Cruz, California. Oh, yeah, I know Santa Cruz. And so. Um, the banana know, slugs. Yep, the banana slugs, UCSC. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's it's like a surf skate town. There's there wasn't a ton of recruiting out there, but then me, like I I just got so much love and so much attention, you know, size wise and speed and everything, and you know it was it was um, that's NFL. fun. I got to do my uh, my five college visits and have some fun. And that's NFL, you know, that's that's NFL, NFL hopeful like numbers though, man. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I my whole life. Once I got into high school, all I ever thought I was going to do was play in the NFL. And sure. um, you know, just school never was my thing. And I, it's you know, I'm sure it's hereditary. It's also my fault. A ninety nine point nine nine percent my fault. And um, you know, it, it just didn't it didn't end up working out. You know, ended up uh, go, uh, after all my college stuff career ended and everything i went to the free agents combine crushed it but i kind of had this uh, bad reputation i'd gotten um expelled for <laughs> <laughs> you remember the i word, had right? a disagreement <laughs> with uh with a coach and i was i was injured and they told me that if i didn't play that uh they were gonna pull my scholarship and i was gonna owe them all this money and he was yelling at me and this and that and you know, I didn't take too well and reached over the desk and grabbed him by the tie, pulled him to the floor. And by the time they got me in, they got in there and pulled me off of him. He, he was dotted up, you know, a couple of black eyes. And everything. <laughs> this is literally the reason I never picked up Gunny. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I kind of had a, a reputation for being a problem and ended up uh, finishing school at a small school, got invited to the independent, um, like, uh, the combine for uh, free agents and yeah. crushed it. Did really well. Ended up in Indianapolis. Did my numbers are insane. Like it was a thirty-three or thirty-four inch vert. 
my fo- my bench. I did two plates forty seven times. <laughs> like, <laughs> crushed, crushed. Like did so well and uh, had a couple looks and everything. And and actually the the Titans had hit up my manager, got me signed to the NFLPA, which is the Players Association, the first step to going to the NFL. And then that all kind of fell out. So I uh, went, went and did a little bit of arena ball in uh, San Jose with the Sabercats. Nice. But by the time I was doing arena ball, like it was way after the fallout. So like two years before I was there, guys were making three to 500000 a year and doing great. When I got there, guys were, you know, going to practice and then working at McDonald's after the shifts, you know, so it was just not my thing. I had to get out of it and ended up going and bouncing at this, uh, this spot downtown Santa Cruz called the catalyst, which was like an awesome concert venue and a bar as well. And got to do so many great things, so many awesome stories, so many really cool people I got to meet and then, uh, found strongman through that A friend of mine who I played junior college ball was also a security guard and, he was obsessed with strongman, like obsessed. This is the only thing he'd ever talk about. I actually took him to a strip club in Colorado once and bought him a dance. And the girl came out and she's like, I never heard anyone talk about strongman so much. <laughs> <laughs> like she didn't even take her clothes off. He just told her about how to pull a truck the whole time. <laughs> no, that's that's kind of how it went. The sports. I, I did shot put uh, senior year in high school. Still have the state record, I believe. Just, you just throw it like a fucking tennis ball. I, I I broke the state. So if you know anything about shot put, the best athletes spin throw. Yeah, and then like if you're not that good, you do a glide throw. I broke the state record by like four feet with a standing throw. So I just stood there and shoved it. And I also broke it, hammered out of my freaking mind. Like it was the end of our my senior year, and I was living alone. I I had. I had a, a house to myself for about a month before before they kicked me out because I couldn't pay rent by myself, you know. <laughs> and uh, so um, it'll happen to a high school kid, you know. Shit, yeah, is what it is. So uh, I threw a big old party the night before our sectional championships, and basically stayed up till five in the morning, just rocking. Like I don't even want to talk about how awesome the time was. But <laughs> <laughs> ended up, you know, the next morning. Like with no sleep going out there and the, the coaches all knew I had thrown this party and my my uh, throwing coach was the offensive coordinator from the football team. And he was so mad at me. He was like, I can smell liquor on you. And I, and I went out there and threw and broke the record. He's like, fine, just go stand over there so nobody smells you. <laughs> That's good. He still had your back at least. Chip. Oh, he did. He did yeah. always, even to this day, you know, the good guy. Yeah. I thought my, I've been blessed in my life. Like I, I, I had some uh, bad direction in different points, but I've always been lucky enough that uh, like my, my high school coaches and uh, the people who were around me at that point were so compassionate and they cared about me so much that I could still call them to this day. I mean, literally uh, one of them, my head coach did me a favor like two months ago. He, it, I, I can't quite say what the favor was. <laughs> it was, it was the COVID restrictions and all this different stuff in California, so I can't quite talk about it. But he, you know, still to this day, they're they're down to help me out with anything. Nice, that's they're awesome. Very, very lucky, that's cool, dude. That's so, cool. so when you had the log press record, what was the record? Two hundred and eleven kilos, which is four hundred and sixty-six pounds. Bro, that's fucking two of me. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I broke it in Australia, right in front of Arnold Schwarzenegger at his show. It was awesome. It was like we're there, it was all the best guys are there. Nobody else could even clean the weight up to their chest, and I went and crushed it. And it, it meant so much to me because at that point, the person who had the record was a really good friend of mine. His, his name was Mike Jenkins, and he had passed away. Whoa. He had, he had like died he, on Thanksgiving that day, uh, that year. Oh, and you broke that in 2014 then. Right. I, I broke it in, I don't oh, know. Oh, whatever. You know. He Yeah, I mean, because he, he died in teens. I, I don't remember. Yeah. I'm, I'm terrible at that stuff. I yeah. just know he had the record still, yeah. and I wanted to be the one to take it from him. Yeah. It, it, <clears throat> I got a little choked up. It meant a lot to me. It meant sure. like so much to me. That's probably one of the greatest moments in my career. Nice. Between that and I was in uh, London and uh, I got 15,000 people to sing happy birthday to my son. 
That's <laughs> awesome. It was That's so awesome. cool, man. That's so awesome. Cool. I, was like, I so I took my phone, I handed it to a guy, and I was like, "Film this." And I took the mic, and and I'd just been bashing everybody the whole time too, but they knew like I was playing the bad guy. But I was out there. I was I was telling them like, you know, everything's great about England except the the weather, the food, and the people. <laughs> <laughs> I was just ripping them and, <laughs> and they, they loved me for it because they knew I was just trying to be entertaining yeah. and, and nobody ever plays the bad guy in my sport. Everyone's trying to be like, you know, like nice and, and accommodating. Nice or doesn't say a goddamn word. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was one thing Haley took a, took away from this competition. She was like, everybody was so nice and so helpful. That's the sport and that's what you want. Yeah. Dude. I mean, it's hard. It's hard not to be humble when you lift like we do, you yeah. know, like we get broken down your, your, your girl's arms and everything were destroyed. Yeah. She's not going home like thinking she's the shit. You know, she's yeah. like, "Fuck!" Like I just got fucked up today. Yeah. So. And, it, and especially in an amateur comp, uh, you don't know where some asshole is going to come out of some fucking uh, barn somewhere and like smoke your ass. So you don't talk shit. You're just nice to everybody. <laughs> right. you know, like, yeah. there's that one corn fed fucking <laughs> kid yeah, yeah. Right, right. just shows up and just like been hucking hay bales yeah, his entire yeah. life, mm -hmm. throw stones. Oh, like you a think you're ready baseball. and you get. You're like, okay. All right. <laughs> no. So our sport is it's just made to humble people. Yeah. It's awesome though, man. Yeah, it's hard it's hard to find I mean they're mm -hmm. out there, but it's hard to find a strong man who's an asshole. You know, most oh. of us, we're big guys, too. We we're, like, you know, picked on for being chubby as kids. And then right. we found the weight room, and then finally we kind of found ourselves in a little bit more of uh, confidence in ourselves and everything. And so that's that's almost every strong man story. Sure. I, I, I follow Eddie Hall on uh, – <laughs> On fucking snap on Snapchat. <laughs> his fucking his Snapchat. I'm just playing for the people listening. Eddie's one of my best friends. His Snapchat's fucking hilarious, man. Like he's he just, still on Snapchat. Yes, <laughs> it was 2012. Yes, 100. percent I'm surprised I haven't got a dick pic from uh, no, him. No, I got off of Snapchat because how many dick pics I got. And I, I mean, not dick pics are fine compared to the shit that I would get. No, no. Yeah, try being this fucking guy's friend. Hey, man. I make him look at the stuff that I have to see. Like it's fucking awful. See it, I'm, I'm like, fine. I'm having this. a great day. Hey, Jim, check this out. Guy's talking to Obi, and then the next thing you know, that guy's pounding his buddy, and I have to fucking see it. <laughs> brutal. And then I'm brutal. yelling at him, why did I have to do that? And he's like, well, I had to see it, so now you have to see it. This is fucking bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Misery loves company. My, <laughs> my DMs are nasty, especially on Snapchat, so I just dumped that thing, man. Dude. It was too bad. Well, he does, like, snap stories. Like, the last one he did was, like, him and his wife, like, they changed diets for the day. Right, right. Like, uh, like, like she had to eat all the calories that he ate. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And, he, and at the end of the day, he's just like, you sure you don't like normally eat a snack right now? No. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> fucking hurting and shit. Like and I he, saw that video. Yeah, she did not look happy about her breakfast even, you dude. know, like the first meal. Dude. And I was like, I'm sitting there looking at the food they're eating. I was like, man, I thought England food fucking sucked. It does. Like, that looks great though. <laughs> like all the fucking shit he was eating. Uh, that amazing. blackened fucking whatever they do for breakfast that like burnt. Uh, they call it pudding. It's the not, blood pudding thing. Blood pudding. It's pudding. Oh, it's so disgusting. disgusting. Yeah. And who the fuck wants beans for breakfast? I don't know. Dude. It's, uh, I will say the tomato looks weird, but it's actually really refreshing. It's great. You know, they always do the eggs and and but they don't even have real bacon. Yeah. Mm. They have what? fucking ham. Yeah. When you go to England, you order bacon. Just they like give goddamn you ham. Canada. It's yeah. ridiculous. It's salty shit. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, you know, John, that's John. why we left. That's why we're here now. 1776 was about the fucking bacon. Yeah. <laughs> that's fuck right. the tea. John yeah. just made Scott tell a story last night about fucking Canadian bacon on pizza and how much he fucking loathes it. <laughs> it's the worst. I'll yeah. do pineapple on pizza. That's exactly See? what I said. Which that shit's on American. Great anyway. pizza if you do pepperoni, pineapple, and jalapeno. Ooh. There you go. And so good. Actual bacon. Actual bacon, actual bacon for sure for sure but when you get the pineapple and jalapeno together oh so nice that's oh, sweet yeah. and spicy mm -hmm. yeah i'm into that that's fucking then you got a piece of fucking <laughs> ham Bullshit. you got a piece of ham that's three inches by three inches you don't know what the fuck to do with it <laughs> <That's> <laughs> nasty. get the fuck rid of it yeah. you can't cut it doesn't fucking work on a pizza mm, dumb canadians dude nasty. it's pizza fucking man Quinn. you can make <laughs> <laughs> we have one canadian listener <laughs> now we have none yeah no, no. i'm telling I'm you playing. this kid is a glutton for fucking punishment man and he wants to see my butthole so bad it's gross mm. And hopefully I turned them on to you, man. Maybe you can take some heat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I know Canada, Canada is actually like kind of uh, a mecca for strongmen. A lot of our greatest strongmen come from Canada. You know, Louis Sear is revered as one of the greatest strongmen of all time. And, and it's just 
there's a tradition of strength up there. And when we do shows in Canada, man, they fucking they get rock the place. Big, yeah. big crowds. Yeah. It's big insane. Crowds. It's insane. And they, they treat us so well. Plus, I mean, the only we can joke around on here, but fuck, Canadians, have, has a Canadian ever pissed any of us off? Like, no. And if they do, they immediately no. say sorry. Yeah, yeah. they're super <laughs> awesome, like sweet yeah. and nice. It's it's almost like like Idaho and Canada are the same place, you know? Like, yeah. like it's very... Um, I got to come to this place called Idaho. I've never been there. It's nice. It's very nice. It's, it's like, Boise's great, and they have great pizza. All right. Really? Yeah. Boy, great, we have the best hunting, great too. We've great great really New York style pizza. I don't know why. Really great fishing. I don't know why. It's a good spot. I mean, you know. I've I don't been want. deer hunting there once. Blue football field. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Big blues up there. That's yeah, right. That's great right. weather. Go constitutional carry state. You know, it's yeah. a great spot. I, I, I really love, I love Idaho. And I'm so like I almost when I moved out there, I moved out there to be close to my son. And uh, I'm Boise's right by the border of Oregon. And I almost moved over the border. Thank God. When I was there. And, oh, my God. I know. Like, imagine if this last two years I was living in Oregon, <laughs> I, I, I would have been arrested for yeah. sure. Like, yeah. I would I would not be here. I just, no However, way. right now you could be like doing shrooms and shit. And it's totally cool. Up there. Right. But who <laughs> says I'm not doing those anywhere else? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't think anybody could actually handcuff you. I've had. I've had police officers. I've been handcuffed several times. Have you? Yeah. 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 I mean, the most recent one too was like (laughs) was ridiculous. The most recent one I was like in my twenties. It was. It was was like ten, fifteen years ago. But uh, I I like got uh, my card broke down on the side of the road, and I was with my little brother. And a female police officer pulled up, and we're on the side of the road with the engine, the hood up, and she was on point like it was very to her she her alert button was up like yeah. fucking all up and uh, and good for good reason you yeah. look at me yeah. she was like five two like you know do you know why like, i handcuffed you right now <laughs> because i let you <laughs> <laughs> i was happy to uh, to do whatever she wanted you know yeah. I'm, I'm always like that with police officers yeah, sure. in, in my old age yeah but she uh, handcuffed me and put me in the back seat, handcuffed my brother, put him in the back seat, and then drove us down to like a payphone and then let us out. <laughs> but, you know, like I totally understood it. I was like, you know, if, if you're on this, you know, lonely road and someone yeah. like me creeps out, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's definitely it's like, dangerous. Just all, out all of a sudden, cur- a fucking bridge troll comes out of nowhere. And it's like, <laughs> holy fuck. Just <laughs> out, of, out of curiosity, how big is your little brother? He's he's not no, nobody in my family is big like me. Really, you know, nobody is. No. How big's your mom? It's crazy. My mom's tiny. My dad's, my dad's Poor like five eleven. Um, it was my dad passed away about a, a little bit ago. Uh, he's like five eleven. Um, maybe maybe two hundred pounds, but yeah. barrel chested. And so I basically I got my grand both of my grandparents, uh, my granddad's height and width. So my mom's dad was like six nine, uh, but Jesus. bone thin. My dad's dad was like five eleven, six foot ish, and he was like just a big barrel, big both of them big German guys. And uh, you know, he he worked on farms his whole life, you know, had like an, an olive farm and stuff in, in uh Missouri. Nice. And so I I was the only one in the family that ended up with both the the height and the the weight. Just won that genetic know. lottery, man. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm I'm gonna be dead at fifty, but you know, I'll be, I'll be <laughs> so right us. before it. So, <laughs> I mean, so, <laughs> so way, dude. I love. Let's see, let's see. My my well, dad died when he was forty seven. I fucking hope not, because that's like three years from now. So fuck <laughs> three <laughs> years. God damn, I'm thirty five. Like, like my mom Might be died. Three years for you, Jay. That's da- what I said for me. <laughs> yeah, for you. Oh shit, no. My dad died at 47. My mom died at 48. I'm like, fuck, dude. I'm putting, I'm hitting 40 next year. I was like, son of a bitch. It's the home stretch, baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, better, you better work that bucket list, kid. Yeah, mm-hmm. right? What do you think I'm doing? I can see that, yeah. <laughs> yeah that one wheel is You definitely right. need to send the Canadian your butthole for sure. <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm experiencing midlife crisis like a motherfucker, man. <laughs> like, ugh, buying toys and stupid shit. That's what happens when you give literally, grown up, literally, grown up money literally to a kid, toys. dude. Uh, I know. Yeah. I'm the same way though. I mean, I, I like I don't like to spend money on myself. I just I, growing up, I was we were very poor. There were ten of us in in a, a three bedroom house, and we did not have electricity uh, except for my dad worked at Cashman Equipment, and he'd bring home he'd sneak a generator home for the weekend, and so on the weekend we'd have warm water and like maybe the TV or something. You couldn't run the microwave or anything on the sure. generator, but um, 
growing up that way, I, I'm at the point where like now that I have money, I just I feel gross spending it on myself. Like everything I'm wearing is either mine, like my like I created it and sell it or someone gave it to me, including right. the underwear and the socks. I just <laughs> I don't spend money on stuff. I don't do it. But my son, my five year old son, I will drop fucking any s- amount of money like nothing. Bullshit. I don't even care. Yeah, I'm I, the same way. N- not even a fucking hesitation. Like yep. I've got him the most ridiculous bunk bed that looks like a like a like a, a hunting blind. Nice. And, and like I went and bought him <laughs> like a, there's a video game called Buck Hunter. And it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, they get the two shotguns yeah. and all that. I went and got him all that stuff. He's got more toys than he could ever imagine. And now I'm like going through the process of like, fuck, I don't want to, I don't want to like spoil him and turn him soft. So, you know, I make sure that I check him and I'm like harsh and make him communicate like an adult, even though he's five, but he still has all this great shit yeah. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like, like his house is the one that like the kids want to come to to hang always, out. They're like, always. they're like, dude, we got to go over to his house, mm-hmm. man. He's got the cool shit. And and what's awesome too is none of the kids that age give a fuck about who I am. Right. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love. They're not there like, dude. Can we get a picture or any of that stuff? They're they're there because there's cool toys or whatever. But they love my son and they're having fun that way. And I can't wait yeah. till the my dad can beat up your dad fucking thing comes though. <laughs> That'll never be an issue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure your kid's gonna win that argument, dude. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I, can, I can just imagine like your kid does something like when he's like 12 or 13, he does something fucky and like we all did and. So I'm like, dude, I'm going to go talk to his father. And he comes walking up and you <laughs> <laughs> speak to her. Kids going to be like, oh, fuck. What's worse than that is when you get mad at other kids his age. So, like, he was at school and he was four. He just turned five. He was four and another kid bit him. And I wanted to fucking fight this kid. <laughs> I, I, like, I will beat a four-year-old's ass right now. Do not fucking touch my son. Yeah. You know, like, you get all crazy. Or, uh, God forbid, a grown adult ever talk to him in a way that I don't like. like right. He's he's literally my everything. So when when anything gets, like, off there, it, it's so it's so amplified. Like, oh, I, yeah. I, I, feel, I feel like a little worried that sooner or later he's going to be playing sports or something and some dad in the crowd is going to be like, you suck, and I'm going to hit up, <laughs> hit up you know, going to prison for five years you know, yeah. just to prove a fucking point. <laughs> Jesus, man. Make sure you're not in California when that happens. Fuck. Yeah. Nah, I, everybody knows not to fucking do anything. So <laughs> well, you just sad. stand up and he's going to be like, right. I meant good job. You're doing <laughs> right. great, kid. Right. <laughs> Number yeah. 84, keep doing you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think we have to worry about it. Plus, he's super sweet. No. Yeah, now, dude. I got a fucking ten year old and a nine year old. They're both pricks. They were they were cool when they were that age too. Yeah, but look at their dad, you know. Uh, <laughs> look at their mom. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, but they're, uh, they're the same way because I I grew up poor shit and uh, it's very very similar, man. Like I spoil the fuck out of those boys, man. It's Thank nice. God I don't have a daughter. Good. If I had a daughter, oh fucking daddy, can I? Yep. yep. Yes, you can, princess. Anything Always. you want. Like my, my pocketbook would be fucked. At least with boys, too, we can spoil them, but we can also rough them up, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, he wants to wrestle all the time, and I wrestle rough. Yeah. And, and he likes that kind of stuff. But also, not just not just the wrestling, but in a day-to-day thing, when he when he needs to be chastised or when, when he makes a mistake and actually needs to learn from it, I have no problem treating him, you know, like as as I should. I have, But with a little girl... I don't think I could. Yeah, uh, yeah no. I'm going for two more kids too, and I, I'm hoping at least one of them's a little girl. Four words, dude. Go ask your mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you had boys. Yeah, we were, we so tried. You, we you tried got for a girl lucky one. as shit too. No, I wanted one girl. You would have buckled just as bad as we would. Yes, but I wanted somebody to take care of me when I'm old. Yeah. Right. The boys are going to be, yeah. though, yeah. the Genghis Khan in the world, you know. Now I'm hoping for, like, great daughter-in-laws, so. Yeah, yeah. for sure. John? Huh. You got sweet boys too, though. Your yeah, your boys, boys have got big hearts, and you could just see it in the way they carry themselves. They're good yeah. kids. They're yeah. really good kids. John, you probably got a kid out there somewhere. We think it's I boy do. or girl. <laughs> no, he's a boy. He's, uh, no, he's, but, uh, I'm talking about ones you don't know about. I'm sure. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> 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 They're all in Afghanistan. Don't worry about it. <laughs> right. I was in Patty Beach, Thailand. I saw that normally tall, blue eyed kid. It was weird. <laughs> I just kept walking around saying fuck a lot. It was weird as shit. (laughs) He had a great fucking beard, though. (laughs) He got that from his mom's side. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It was down on Walking Street in Boys Town. It's fine. It's fine. There we go. 
Mm. Oh man, what are we uh, smoking on there, there, kids? What do we oh. got tonight? I got the five five six Corojo. Yeah, I'm on my favorite man. I got my seven six two Sumatra. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm smoking a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you have the five five six Connecticut. Yep. Yes, right. sir. Oh, I'm happy with that. Nice. I'm smoking our Rosado, the seven six two Garrison. Went heavy, huh? Yeah. Nice. That's towards the end of the day. I've already had like four or yeah. five. <laughs> you should have been here right before you got here. I decided to see how many of these I could smoke at once for a video. <laughs> and I got to six cigars that I had them all going all in my mouth at the same time. And it was, it was a fucking. <laughs> he set off the smoke alarm. That, I didn't, they didn't even know, know they had a smoke alarm. None of here. us did. We're all sitting there. Me, Dave, and Scott look at each other. We're like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> You're hitting the alarm button. Why isn't it turning <laughs> off? <laughs> no, I started to feel nauseous pretty quick, too. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. Well, it's hard to just puff on six at the same time without inhaling. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. It yeah. felt like one of those POV videos. I was like, <laughs> how many can you fit? It's like a casting couch all over again. Shit. Exactly. <laughs> Jimbo, what do you got down there? You got the Garrison. Yeah. Well, you got the Corojo. Corojo. Yeah, I love these things. Yeah. It's, it's a good. That's a good all day long cigar. Yeah. cigar but uh, you know, uh, honestly, everything you guys make is good. It's which one? Which one do I have? You have the five five six Field Connecticut. Connecticut. Yeah. yeah, this is super mild, nice. Yep, that's you what know, you wanted. Even if you've just smoked six cigars at the same time, you can still <laughs> smoke this one. Uh, yeah. It's complimenting uh, uh, some Jameson Black Barrel that you're sipping it's on. Nice. There. I keep dipping the little end in it too. Yeah. It's nice. Nice. Really nice. Nice. What do you want uh, there, Scotty boy? What are you drinking? Uh, uh the Black Barrel. Black Barrel. Yeah. yeah same. Yeah. I dove into that copper shot. Yeah. Is that yeah. any good? Yeah, it is. Try it. Phenomenal. You yeah. want some? I had a whole bottle of bur- bourbon for you guys for the show, and I completely forgot the goddamn. Yeah, I keep forgetting to go because Josh uh, Aguinetta Ordele bought us. Uh, he oh. Venmoed me that money. And I'm going to give you back my uh, glass to get some ice. Oh, shit. Have you guys tried the uh, Buffalo Trace? Oh, love it, dude. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. good. I hear many good things about it. It doesn't yeah, last too I'm long a, in the store. In the, uh, in yeah, the I'm, shop a, I'm a big fan of that one. They uh, uh, they've got it figured out, man. But uh, yeah, they've been Buffalo. around since before we were like One separate, iceberg. like before America was separate, seventeen seventy three or something like that. Really? Yeah. Wow. How cool that is that? Worked. It's like every chick in a bar in Boston. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Obi, are you normally a, a whiskey bourbon guy? Yeah, whiskey is uh, my preferred drink for sure. If I'm drinking hard liquor, um, I grew up in uh, so Santa Cruz County is. You know, there's Watsonville, Aptos, Capitol, all that stuff. I grew up in Watsonville, which is like uh, 94, 95% Hispanic. So my favorite drink is Micheladas because that's Ooh, really? like, that's what I started drinking when I was a kid. Wow. And, oh, my God. You just, what, that Kamano even, juice, oh, and nice, oh, spicy yeah. beer. beer. Yeah. It's the best. Like, I, I, I can drink those all day long anywhere. I know? can only drink those in the morning after a really rough night. It's going to be a rough night. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm out of vodka. And it's a lot, a, acid. It's or, a lot of acid. Or if I'm going to the river in Arizona, it's the first thing I start with. Really? Yeah, uh-huh. it's a solid prep for your stomach. And you Get can some drink salt the in there. Day. Nice. Yep. Nice. Uh, I would be remiss if we didn't mention some sponsors here, especially because one of them's sitting off camera in front of us. Aaron Robertson Insurance. Uh, check him out, AaronRobertsonInsurance.com. That's one A. Not that second A that you, all you fuckers out there watching this use. We know who you use. We know they fucking suck. He's going to beat it. I guarantee it. Trust me, he literally saved me 80 bucks a month yesterday. Also yeah. brought to you by warfightertobacco.com. Use that code FREEDOM for it. Screw yourself that sweet 15% off discount over there. And, of course, our friends over at ohwellness.us for all your CBD needs. Uh, sore muscles are a thing. Obi, I'm sure you get them a lot. Um, do you use CBD at all? I Products? do. do I, I smoke dope, and I use CBD. <laughs> hey, God bless you, buddy. And fucking ohwellness is, has got this, uh, this uh, freeze gel, this roll-on freeze gel. I that has it, fucking changed it my life, no, dude. Not it. It, it, oh, no. I got I got one in my truck actually. It's fucking amazing. Nice. But uh, yeah, and they're also the US. the inventors of the flashlight, right? They should be <laughs> <laughs> the CBD flashlight. <laughs> it, it's funny you should mention that because that guy lives in Seguin. I know. Really? Yeah, I know. Yes. You should see what? Him. Let's get him. No. Hey, <laughs> so so this guy. So this creepy. That's yeah, a quick story. This creepy guy is like fifty years old. Comes to the poorhouse all the time. And he's got like a little. How are you gonna call him creepy when you see him on a regular basis? I don't know. Well, he, it's been a while, and he drives a Bentley. You don't listen to the show. Fuck him. <laughs> he, drives, he drives a Bentley. He gets out of his car, and he's got a. Uh, Most of our listeners have used a flashlight. There so. is nobody. I still have so this not. guy's now a fucking. 
in folk hero. I still have not. I, I'm not uh, like totally not against it either. I would like to know what they feel like. Oh my! I got gosh. a I got a anyway. flashlight story for you boys. Go ahead. Jeff. So this guy. So I'm sending. Uh, this is the everything will flow from here. So he gets he he has like a, a sidekick chick. She's in her 40s. Melfi Melfowitz fucking looks great. And then he's got this um, vivid looking chick. The plastic one. I thought I thought she like was a, a fucking doll. Looks and like then when she moved, I literally jumped back. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he like sat a doll See? next to him, and she moved. I seriously she looks fucking like a, jumped. A vivid girl in the worst part, like she got dipped in plastic. Yeah, it's wow. Worse. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> you had one. That guy had one good idea. <laughs> no, no, one. he had one great. But that, that great <laughs> idea. idea probably made him close to a billion. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know though. The day he took a Meg Light D cell flashlight apart, it was like I'm gonna fuck his, this and put his dick in it. <laughs> so I want to know. Working for me. I, I want to know better. that story. Right. It's not yeah, working for me. It's not bad. I got to get. Gonna, he stuffed it full of chocolate pudding or some shit. You know, right? many, I don't know. <laughs> you know how many pissed off lower enlisted people are in the military when the flashlight came out? And they're like, fuck, I've been making one of these out of an MRE for the fucking past 10 years. Dude, people do <laughs> fucking MREs? Dude, two ham slices and a boot band. Also, <laughs> also, what kind of sex are you having when you want to have pudding shooting out of the fucking flashlight when you're doing it? Well, it's yeah, just I a game, think- man. You know? <laughs> Yikes. So uh, my best friend, John, he was killed in Iraq in 2007. The namesake of my son, John, you know, his wife, Lindsay, at the time uh, had a custom made flashlight made from her. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. For him to take over overseas. <laughs> so when you get KIA, they, they go through all your shit and look and, you know, and they throw out all the porn, all the bad shit, uh-huh. you know, to send back to your family. She got his box of shit back. because She's next to Ken and was like. Where's my fucking flashlight? And the fucking <laughs> and the Keiko, the, like the staff yeah. sergeant was in charge is like, um. I don't know. She's like, no, 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 motherfucker. Somebody else may not be fucking my pussy over in Iraq right now. Where's my fucking <laughs> pussy? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you know how much fucking money I spent on that thing? I want it back. Wow. And they were like, it's gone, sweetheart. It's in a burn pit somewhere. And he was, we, we hope. Fucking pissed. Thought, yeah, right? I, th- awesome. I thought you were going to tell the other one where... Uh, they kept getting STDs from the, the oh, flashlight, oh, passing it yeah. around. Oh, that, was, that was one guy who just kept what catching. The fuck, who he uses kept, somebody else's no, no, he, flashlight? He kept catching it from himself. Oh, yeah, I had one fucking oh, gross so he marine. Had something, he, yeah, he'd go get it taken care of yep. and catch it again every fucking week for like three <laughs> weeks. This gross motherfucker got, gave himself chlamydia, and finally, I checked his room out, and he had this funky ass fucking pocket pussy. You know, just like Jesus Christ. I was like, what is fucking wrong with you, dude? <laughs> That's, That's what horrible. dishwashers are for. Christ. <laughs> That's horrible. It was also, I kind of feel bad for the guy like he like goes away and he gets his one opportunity to fuck something else and it's the same thing as home you know like, right. <laughs> let's get like a little bit more lip or something in this thing. <laughs> Obi, you have never been deployed to iraq or afghanistan no. there, there is nothing worth fucking over Dude. there no 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 i mean like let's get a flashlight that's made out of like jenna oh. jameson's pussy or something yeah. you know? like, rather than like my like it's like oh great yeah, <laughs> right. Same, same, but different. Right. Yeah. I mean, so, shit. So this is like home, but I still have to do the work myself. Yeah. God damn it's it. Nothing. So it's just like a marriage. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> it's not even cooking for me. Yeah. Fuck. I don't know. Every one of us has jerked off on a porta shitter at one point in our life. If you can do that, you can deal with the same pussy for a few months in the desert. I've Jesus never jerked Christ. off in a porta shitter. Just, I don't think just to say because <laughs> I've never been to Iraq and had to do it. So. Dude, yeah. it is the, you, the proper way to do. It, you got to wait till it's like 130 degrees out. Yeah, man. Yeah, and then it's just just a test of fucking might. Yeah, you, <laughs> you do the what was the Carradine's first name? You know the guy wrapped David the thing. Carradine. Yeah, you David Carradine yourself in there. <laughs> <laughs> got your Mick Matt belt around your yeah. neck, fucking pound. Downtowning. If it's a hundred degrees, why not choke yourself too? You know, fuck, dude. Dude, I was making like, weird as fuck for the next guys comes uh-huh. walking in because you didn't lock the fucking He's door. Five <laughs> fifty cord hanging, you just like people uh-huh. singing you is part of the pleasure. You know, what I mean? yeah. <laughs> dude. I've literally been the guy like beating off on the port of John when mortar rounds like incoming start coming, and everybody's like, "Get to the bunker!" And I'm like, "I'm three minute. more minutes, <laughs> <laughs> like, almost there. I'll be there in a sec. Leave me alone, fuck." You it's go fine. home and you got to set off fireworks just to get <laughs> off now. <laughs> well, it's like, Fourth of up? July is such a turn on. Mikey gets the big giant voice and sets it off. Like, all right, now we can go. Just <laughs> <laughs> so fucking hit the button. Incoming, yeah. incoming, I need, incoming. I need an air raid siren. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, that's the ticket. That's what we needed. I don't know how he got on all this, but uh, <laughs> that's yeah, probably my fault. Yeah. Flashlights live in fucking Seguin, apparently. Shit. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's just yeah. impressive, though. Yeah. So he's got yeah. a plastic chick. It looks like Meghan Markle at that fucking first appearance. It's, she's it's fucking <laughs> horrendous, dude. And we can't figure out because she's got he's got like the sidekick who like she carries a book around. Like I don't know what the fuck the book's for. 
But yeah, he's got a check. The guy's in. handling his business. I mean, he's, he's got a he's, Bentley. Yeah. The guy's rolling. Yeah. So whatever. One good yeah. idea. That's all it takes, man. Right. Yeah. I wonder if fucking millions. the plastic chick made him think of the flashlight. He's like, man, this is just no, no. fucking. No, no, that guy didn't get that hey, guy. Yeah. Of course. It's, it's like, it's you, like the, the mortar Bentley rounds and fireworks. Chicks. Right, right. He's fucking his flashlight and he needs a plastic chick. Yeah. <laughs> See? Yeah, yeah. yeah, same. He's like, I can't get off if it doesn't feel like plastic. <laughs> yeah. That makes a lot of sense. It's all coming together. Well, it makes yeah. sense. Uh, yeah. I, I think there's a market out there for sexual fireworks now as well. You know, if you come back, you come back from spending time overseas, we get these like like fi- maybe it's a tape recording, like mm. it's like sexual noises followed by fireworks, or, followed, or, do, or you followed can by the mosque. Just pour pop rocks singing. in her yeah, pants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's recording our RPGs and AK 47s Yeah, <laughs> just do the pop, just do the pop rock chick, the trick. Just you know, just throw that in there. Throw her up there. Do some uh, pop rocks. That sounds so terrible too. <laughs> just feels like a herpy bursting. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. That's I, just, um, I just watched the visual representation go into each one of your minds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mikey, that's both priceless and disgusting at the same time. Yep. That's you, you went deep. You're, wel- you're welcome for my Very service. deep. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. fuck, man. I remember I was in uh, junior like college and I I was working at like a Chili's or something. And I, I luckily, I, I wasn't. Uh, uh, my game was not tight back then. <laughs> and uh, Nobody's was, man. <laughs> uh, some of the guys were, man. I'm telling you, guys guys were doing a lot better than me. But um, yeah, I, I remember I, I somehow luckily convinced this girl to come hang out, you know. And she had the shave bumps, like oh, little yeah. shave bumps. And I was so stupid. I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously nothing else happened. Yeah. <laughs> You know. <laughs> that that night ended abruptly, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. And uh, then I, I learned what the shave bumps were. She didn't tell me either. She just got mad and left. <laughs> I, I found out kinda... from telling 40 other people that story. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of rude of her. At least educate a guy. Right. If you're going to leave me high and dry, you know, do something. Good God. <laughs> nah. That's not nice. That's not fair. Yeah. Fuck. You know how it is. So you got worlds coming up, man. Yeah, nine weeks. That's exciting. Yep, feeling good, man. I'm feeling really good. Good. Nice. Is that before or after the whole Jamaica trip? Jamaica's in July. Yeah. And so it's right after. So my, my July is going to be so badass. My July. <laughs> I go spend 10 days in Jamaica, come home <laughs> for a couple days, then I fly right out to Hawaii to spend two weeks in Hawaii. Hell yeah. My July is going to be awesome. Your liver's nice, going to be man. fucked up, bro. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna drink in Jamaica, but I'm not really going to drink in Hawaii. And... um. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll damage myself bad in Jamaica. We just got to eat, dude. We just got to yeah. eat. And I'll still train. Like, I'll drink in the morning, take a nap, drink in the evening, wake up in the morning, go train. Like, yeah. I'll still do that. Yeah. Sure. Well, you got to keep it tight, man. Shit. I have to. I mean, I'm already loose enough. There you go. I've, I've been on a mission to, to get back in shape before we go to Jamaica. Nice. And uh, so pretty much as soon as, like, everything was set in stone, I like looked in the mirror and I'm like, Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Those trips like that are good for for motivation, you know. Yeah, it's, it's huge, especially where we're going, like the nice, gorgeous, all inclusive resort. You know, we're going to be taking a zillion photos. Right. And These fucking people off. have no fucking idea what's about to happen to them. <laughs> no, they really don't. <laughs> no, Jama- Mikey. Jamaica. Literally, if you could come, I mean, you're invited. If you could come. That would just put the icing on the cake. Dude. Even if you came for like fucking four days. Fuck that. So Let's can invite burn- the fleshlight guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a Bentley. Maybe he's got a private plane. Maybe he's got a plane, weird. Yeah. Fuck. You never know. His wedding gift could be like a, a gift package for all of us. You yeah, know? we each get a little pack. You know? <laughs> he does like groomsmen gifts. Yeah. It's, like, it's like specific vaginas. The, the, right, 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 right. the Bono like- wedding brought to you by Fleshlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a sponsor. Yeah, it's a sponsor. Yeah. You know, I was concerned, man, because I'd come up to you on Saturday because you were sunburned as fuck. Yeah. And uh, you were right, dude. It turned to fucking tan. Yeah, I don't burn be, too bad. I mean, I must be fucking nice. I'm lucky. I've yeah. I've, uh, I've burned a couple times in my life when I was a kid. But, you know, normally if if I catch it early enough, uh, I'll be fine. Dude, I have nice. three shades. It's red, white and peeling. That's yeah, I'm telling I you what, man, my, at least that's the one thing my Mick jeans didn't fuck me. Yeah. It's like the Italian jeans override it. Yeah, you can the Sicilian yeah, you jeans. Can get, you can get but dark. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason for that too. Be, no. Being Sicilian as opposed to like uh-huh. mainland uh-huh. Italian. Fuck off! Don't go down this road. <laughs> on, anyway, yeah. I've seen Come fucking on. true romance. Don't we, fucking start. We know. <laughs> yeah. We know why. 
But, uh, <laughs> What's that word? It starts with a G. What's that called? <laughs> Rap. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Between uh, that and the herpes, fuck. man, we're fucking rocking this one. Yeah, we are. <laughs> uh, as, as, as we do, man. Mm-hmm. As we do. Well, shit, Obi. Uh, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's hard. It's hard to continue after flesh. I know. Right? I know. <laughs> Where do we, we go from here? About you, the news today. How do you fucking follow that? <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. Uh, yeah. No, man. We appreciate you coming by, so, dude, and uh, taking the time while you're in town to uh, you know sit on this mediocre show with these mediocre assholes like us no, no. Obi, uh, Obi where can everybody find you on uh, social media all and my stuff stuff? Just, uh, all under my name Robert Oberst and uh, you know on, on YouTube you can search my name the, the channel is actually called the Amer- uh, American Monster Productions and um, what about your swag yeah. All my swag stuff, it just go through my pages or it's on Bunker Branding and um, yeah we're doing there's a bunch of really cool shirts and stuff like that we do. All I like the time. this one you got on, man. This, yeah. one, this is a yeah. good one. I, I, uh, Strong and Pretty is the the tag that I've had for, you know, probably about eight years now. Yeah. And so, uh, and what's funny is you you can find my Strong and Pretty shirts on several different websites yeah. <laughs> that don't pay me shit. Uh, right? Yeah, we know the we know the fucking struggle yeah. on that one. We made a uh, when when the whole Corona thing first happened. Uh, we put out a, a shirt. It was the Wuhan Wild Wings, uh-huh. and, it, and it said, "So good it's contagious." And, oh yeah, and that was nice. that was our idea, and then all of a sudden it fucking blew up across the internet, and we were oh, just yeah. like, "Fuck you, Teespring." Yeah. I created Fuck you, I, Teespring. I created a new sh- like shirt today. I came up with it with uh, with Jim, and I'm not gonna say what it is. <laughs> yeah. like it's, it's a great idea. It's kind of like the shirt he's got on right now. Get, get it, tra- trademark it, and fucking you. Can, yeah. I mean, it's you can trademark let like. Whatever you do, but all they have to do is slightly change yeah. it. You know, like yeah. it's 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 the it's, wild west when it comes. But well, once like he comes out with, there'll be one of two shirts, and I have the other one. And yeah, it, so nice. Yeah. It'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, check him out wherever you can find fucking any kind of social media except for Snapchat, apparently. Because don't Snapchat me. Yeah, he's he's, he's done with that because he's you Mm-mm. fucking weirded him out, everybody. I also don't do TikTok. Like I tried for a minute, and I just I feel like. You know that that really old guy who always goes to the high school parties, right? And he's like, like oh, "I used to run this place." You know, that's what I felt like on TikTok. The coach so would like, put me in. We'd have took state back in '86. <laughs> exactly, Mike, Mike, you're on TikTok, right? I am on TikTok. <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, it, it's working. It's blowing up, and it's you know, it's one of the most popular like forms of social media right now. It's just. I don't know. I I don't I don't have the patience for all that, dude. Yeah. It is the quickest way. You to gotta like, get Instagram though. It is the quickest Instagram, way yeah. to like just fucking kill three hours though. Is TikTok? That you know, shit is just like, how, this is gonna wow. sound silly too, but you can find out so much news and information on TikTok. You always have to verify it. Right. Sure. You always have to go through and and I don't I don't really Google. I duck duck go stuff. And so, like, you see some information on, on TikTok. You go on duck, duck, go it. I hope that's on camera. <laughs> yeah. Do you have some issues there, Kira? <laughs> Not anymore. She's like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I missed it. I'm, I'm slouching. She was just dragging ass. ass. Nice. Uh, nice. Right across the front of the bar. Beautiful. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> Little suction sounds. <laughs> oh, shop dog. Uh, well, fucking hey, man! Again, thank you very much for coming up. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time while you were in town, man. Uh, great job on Saturday, uh, helping judge uh, the uh, strongman comp over there. It was a great tier. event. Went over well. It was a uh, real good event. It was man. a ton of fun. I, it was funny. I got a lot of credit for just standing there and doing nothing. Hey, so. man. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were coaching some of the guys. That's, that's, a little bit, that's yeah. that pretty part of the strong dude. Right. So, right, I mean, right, right. That's, that's part. That's half the shtick, dude. Mm, Shit. Exactly. Well, a lot of those guys came out just to you know to get that coaching and stuff, and they're not going to get it any place else. So that's why top tier. We we brought them in. Yeah. Him and 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 Travis. So. Yeah. Yeah, a ton of fun. It was a lot of fun, man. Just, it's always great coming back in town and seeing all you guys and stuff, too. So thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. man. Uh, so like, share, subscribe, smash all those buttons, hit all that shit. Check out our merch, redactedsupply.com. There's a big fuck off button in the middle of the page. Um, and as always, tell your mom. Tell your friends. Tell your fucking mom's friends. Right. Definitely. Tell that bitch. Fucking butthole scarves for everybody. God damn it. <laughs> Get on it. <laughs> right. And uh, there's really just uh well first let me let me raise my glass and just say thank you all for being my freedom friend. Cheers, Cheers buddy. Up. Cheers, Obi. Thank you for coming. Catch you boys. Hey, Ra. And uh there's three little pieces of advice that we like to give. Jim, why don't you hit him with the first one? 
fuck, dude. I hate when I'm the first guy. I know the last thing. <laughs> All right, John. Smoke on. There you there go. go. Scotty boy. Ooh, drink on. God damn it, boys. Freedom, Freedom the, the fuck, fuck on. on. We'll see you guys next time.